Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. I know I promised that Lesson 108 was going to be on base transactions and eventual consistency. And I do promise that that will be Lesson 109 in two weeks. However, I wanted to slide this lesson in first, Lesson 108 on the role of a software architect um, based on a recent podcast that I recorded with Phil Burgess on the IT Career Energizer podcast. This was a podcast I did a couple of weeks ago as of the date of this, this recording here. And the first question Phil asked me was, so Mark, before we get started on kind of your career and some career advice, uh, tell us what an architect does. And while I answered the question, I wasn't entirely satisfied with my answer. I wanted to really expand on that more. And so I decided to do a lesson to better answer that question. What does a software architect really do? Well, it turns out <laughs> that we would not have had enough time in that IT Career Energizer podcast to actually answer that single one question. It probably would have taken most of the podcast. <laughs> so I decided to do that here. And there are a lot of activities and things an architect does. So when you say, well, what does an architect really do? I talk quite a bit about the expectations of an architect, and what they're really expected to do. Let's talk about the role. And because the first thing an architect does is to identify and quantify, as well as qualify, those architectural characteristics. Um, some people call these illities or non-functional quality attributes. And this requires a software architect to collaborate closely uh, with the business stakeholder, maybe the product owner or project sponsor, uh, to determine the business needs and translate those into uh, those architectural characteristics. And it's also not only identifying and quantifying these, it's making sure that they haven't changed since our last discussion about six months or a year ago. In Lesson 102, uh, you can actually learn as a reference uh, more about these architecture characteristics in my Architecture Characteristics Frequently Asked Questions lesson. Another thing an architect does, if we think, what does a software architect do? Well, they also select an architecture style or really validate the existing architecture style. A lot of times this is interesting. We, we look at all these various architecture styles, by the way, which Lesson 89 on Part 4 of Becoming a Software Architect, I really talk about all these different, uh, all these different uh, architecture styles. And they're also, uh, we devoted a chapter in our book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which I'll give the reference at the end of this lesson, uh, to each of these. My main point here is you may say, but Mark, we don't do any new applications and this is still a role of the architect. Do you have the right architecture style in place? Because it may have been valid five years ago, but business changes, technology changes, uh, environments change maybe to cloud, and maybe it's not the right architecture style now. So it's this constant validation as well and knowing about these architecture styles. You know, another thing an architect does is also to identify, uh, refine, and also analyze architectural components. An architecture component is a building block of the application. It's usually manifested as a group of source code files within a directory, a namespace, or a package structure, for example, as in Java. And these components that we define as architects and maintain as architects are all put together to create that service or application. In Lesson 101, I talk a lot about components in terms of uh, refining those and, and really defining a component in the components and root namespaces. And so that's a good reference uh, for learning more about um, what you mean by component in the architecture. Perhaps, though, one of the most important things an architect does is to identify, understand, and evaluate trade-offs. This is perhaps one of the most important roles and activities of an architect. As a matter of fact, it's so important that Neil Ford and I, in our book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, coined the first law of software architecture. And that first law states everything in software architecture is a trade-off. 
And it's up to us as architects to identify what those trade-offs are, analyze those trade-offs to make a good decision. As a matter of fact, part five of lesson 90 on becoming a software architect, I really talk about three different techniques for analyzing trade-offs. And so this is perhaps, like I said, probably one of the most important aspects. But when we analyze trade-offs, that leads to another thing an architect does, and that is to make architecture decisions justify those decisions, and also document those decisions. As a matter of fact, in Lesson 55, I talk about architecture decision records, an effective way, my favorite way, by the way, of documenting, justifying, and showing the consequences of architecture decisions. It's, it's, it's my favorite way of really documenting a software architecture. Now, once we've made decisions, another thing an architect does is then to govern those decisions, to really ensure compliance with the architecture. When I like to ensure compliance, or when I have to ensure compliance with the architecture, I like to do so through automated fitness functions. And here's a lesson number 73 that you can really learn a little bit more about those fitness functions. Things like ArcUnit, ArcUnit Net, NetArc Test, uh, these are great tools or maybe even just custom code that I write uh, to be able to analyze the architecture and also to make sure that my decisions are being complied. Uh, a lot of times, uh, most of the decisions that I make as an architect, I try to automate. Uh, a lot have to be manual checks, but I look for and strive for that architectural automation uh, of that governance. The last thing I want to talk about on the role of a software architect is also second most important due to the trade-offs, and that is to lead and guide development teams through the implementation of the architecture. As a matter of fact, I'd say this is equal to um, analyzing and understanding trade-offs. Uh, leading and guiding development teams is building up those soft skills, the facilitation, coaching, mentoring, uh, to lead and guide your team through the implementation of that architecture. As a matter of fact, Lesson 91, I talk about the last segment on becoming a software architect, uh, some of those aspects of leading and guiding development teams. It's a good for uh, some further reference on this. As you can tell, um, this would have been a long answer to Phil's question in the podcast, um, but I really did want to devote this lesson to really uh, kind of concisely showing and graphically showing really what a software architect does. Um, the lessons on becoming a software architect that I've done within here also shed some light on really that pathway in becoming a software architect, really charting a course um, which also includes some of the things that an architect does need to know. So for more references, uh, certainly all of this material is uh, covered in detail in multiple chapters uh, within our book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which we just published last year. Uh, also, lots of great resources on developer2architect.com, especially Software Architecture Monday, where these lessons are housed. So this has been Lesson 108, The Role of a Software Architect. I humbly apologize if those of you who were expecting 108 to be the base transactions, but as I said, I promise that will be in two weeks on Lesson 109. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of concise answer to um, really summing up what is the role of a software architect and what does a software architect really do? So thank you so much for listening. Stay safe. Bye-bye.